Okay, let's rock and roll, shall we? Absolutely. Let's go. So, questions from the group here in case some of you all think. Questions you got to do. That is true. Pastor Rupert will be here to teach for the prayer. He is the former district president. His pastor is the senior year of the month. He is the senior year of the month. He is the senior some people come out of the boxes. Anything? Well, okay, we have two questions. Uh, first one I got is, uh, what is what did you propose? What did you think of this? Where do you think of this? Huh? Okay, we're going to have to that would be a double out of the world team would be a team of murder of the Avengers. Okay, uh, who's So, way of seeing it, he's a partner. Mm. Uh, no, I know. I, would, I wouldn't want to say that. <laughs> okay, way of seeing uh, Well, the point is, let me tell you, the point is in the book of Jude. Book of Jude. It's a very short book, but a full revelation. And our Jude was a half brother of Jesus. So, proud of the great, or if you're a good man, proud of Joseph. And for half brother of Jesus. And he came in the time of the apostle that worked with Christ and Jesus after the resurrection. And he was in the church. And he was in the world of life. In any case, that's where he works for the people who have great access to the revelation. And it's one chapter only, and it's 25 verses like this. And this is what it says when it uses that phrase Woe to them, for they have gone the way of truth, and in the fulfillment. They have left Hezbollah into the area of Balaam and perished in the rebellion of Korah. So, who are they? Well, um, these men revile things that they do not understand, the things which they know by instinct, like unreasonable animals, by these things they are destroyed. Um, if we're talking about this, the whole thing in the entire letter of Jude to the church is about Christ's 
going to be a very So he's talking about false teachers, and he equates the way of truth with uh, two other quotes. Uh, and uh, the one is Balaam, and the other is Torah. Now, what what do these things have in common? Well, the last two have in common are the false teachers. The idea of Balaam, of course, tries to be the same as he was employed. Being that he was actually high, or somehow harder, 
Question I've got is uh, basically uh, asking, we, we talked a little bit about this in the past, voting and that that's controllable, I think. We call it that program. Uh, we really don't need as much as that subject to the public health system, especially uh, more public than the public It's a big deal of that subject. More important to this than that great deal. Not controllable. Does God have to control the Does God know the to the Does God want the It's very important that we always distinguish. Between knowledge and the and the One thing I want to do the fact that God knows everything that's going to happen from the things we get to the to who's going to be the case. The fact that God knows what's going to happen does not equal the same as God causing it. Some things happen only because of God. We know that no life comes into the world. Some kind of no life comes into the world except by the will of God. Every thing that determines, every animal that reproduces, every human that conceives, is by God's will. We know that this is true. We also know that every death is by God's will. Also, no one can kill except God. God is not kill. Specifically, every person that dies, whatever way they die, is not related to the description. Every person that dies, dies only. Will of God. Right? And you apply this concept of God's sovereignty, God's control, to human action, God's labor. It seems to be a contradiction. We know that free will in humans is limited. Unbelievers have no free will in terms of the world. Sure. Humans can only, unbelievers can only do that. No unbeliever can do something good in God's eyes. No unbeliever can do good in God's eyes. Two people can do the exact same thing, the great million dollar check for an aircraft. One's a believer, the other's unbelief. And what the believer does is good, good work in God's eyes. What the unbeliever does is an evil work in God's eyes. Why? Because the, 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 the unbeliever is, by definition, trying to see things for the same thing. So, again, we have to look at the self as an Now, the unbelievers do have free will, 
on purely earthly human relationships. Just like I'm saying, unbelievers and believers both have free will as to, not allowed to have free will as to the beginning of it. The fact that they can be able to get away with it. That's all kinds of free will. The free will doesn't include faith. The believer has limited faith. It's not empirical. Only in so far as they have faith. So, a believer can do the work, a believer can make good decisions, a believer can make bad changing decisions, a believer can do God pleasing things. So, a believer can both limited free will as far as the world is concerned, and limited free will as far as the church is concerned. Unbelievers can have limited free will only as far as the world is concerned. So, that's all right. Now, in terms of things like voting, election, and stuff like that, they fall into the same category as all kinds of other things. Like, I guess, you can be king, you can be king, you can be king, Um, God's will is, I guess, in the whole principle, God's will has to be the same. When God spoke to Jacob to be blessed to suffer, and then later to Moses, he made it clear that the Messiah would arise from the tribe of Judah, the second one. So it's very clear that the line of covenant went to Judah and the tribe of Judah. And Messiah would be a member of the tribe of Judah, which is what Jesus was. Why then, and the line of faith in the Israel would go to the tribe of Judah. Why then, Because it was God's intention all along to have the line of kings of Judah, which was the Jesus, come from the line of Judah, which God installed the first king of the Jesus, and the first king of the And you can also say, since God knows all things, he knew that Saul would lose his faith. And he commits suicide. And then he's raised by the Jesus, who was the son of Jesus. Then why did Saul fall in the first place? And what? And thirdly, even with the God's intention, not only to go through the life of God, to go through the life of Jesus, and Jesus, and to David himself, why is then Samuel to look at all of this and say, why not just send Samuel out into the deep field, the field of life, pick David up by the cross and say, here are the things. I can see that they don't have to attack him. Not just to parade his other six sons in front of Samuel, uh, uh, because they decided to take them all along to make David the king. So you can have a lot of other things to say about that, but how can it take so long to get to each of them? That's what they say. So, what do these 
just look for an example of the You remember what God said to the nation before all took? Remember what God told them? Remember what they said? Every other nation around us has a We don't have a king. How come we don't have a king? Everybody else has a king. Kind of cool. You know, the king of the world is coming to the king of the king of the world. the king of the world. We need a king. 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 We need I'm guiding and directing the political life of the nation directly. It's a true theocracy. But the other thing he told them, he told them, you only think you want to You really don't want to take Yeah, kings are the king, the king's the, you know, you want a king with a palace and all of the alien that goes with it? Who's going to pay for all that? You are. Okay? He's going to take, he's going to tax you. You're going to take money. You're going to take your possessions. You're going to take your animals. You're going to confiscate from your land. You're going to take from your crops. He's going to take your sons for his army. He's going to take your sons off the war. They've been killed. He's going to take your daughter for many parents. For many of them off the war. In other words, you're going to lose control of that. You're going to lose control of your children. You're going to lose children in you. You're going to lose children in So you really don't want the good to go. You really don't want the things to go. You really don't want the king. You really, really, really don't want the king. You think you do. But you really don't. You don't want the king. Of course, what do the people say? Yes, we do. What do you know? You're only God. You don't have to live here. And it's embarrassing not to have a king. Come on. Right there. Everybody else has got a king. We don't got a king. Everybody else says, hey, where's your king? I don't know. He lives in heaven. That's a miracle. Okay. What does this tell us? It tells us that God is in control for this particular thing. Okay. It tells us that God will get his will done. Maybe, however, maybe it's the right thing. I'm not saying that I think it's the right thing. It's just the right thing. It's 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 the right thing. I don't have a thing that I don't think that's a thing. I don't have all for that. I say a thing. God works in the future. Not so much who has a thing to do. I think that it's true. I don't have a thing to do. In other words, God, he still works. But all of them, he has to go through all kinds of affirmations. In other words, there's a direct line, and there is a kind of legal line, right? As it happens to the last year. The direct line, I would tell you from now on the world, is that the people would have said to the king, you know what? Now that we, now that we hear this, that I have to do this. You're right. We 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 take that out of the court. Would they have been 
seen more and more to the political and to the secular world. They believe that that is what we need to do. Where the people will say, the only way to fix it is to go to the school I know his theology, obviously his theology is true, but it's true, 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 We don't have a law in this country. We don't. It's not against the law. Not the law. It is the law. It's the law. It's against the law. It's actually against the law. You can actually be arrested and have to jail for not voting. You're seeing a lot of people in the world. But yeah, you can be talking in the new style for the last one year. You can say that it's true. That is not true. That is true. You can say, oh, it's not true. Talks on both houses, I don't know. Some of them are not going to be able to change the outcome. But a 
lot of them here. A lot of them are still not to me because they're the bigger way to fix it. Again, no historians have no question about The kingdom of God is the future of God. Thank you. Now, listen to the Bible. Listen to the Bible. You can see that dead people go to the river now. They no longer can stay to fix it over the top. Chicago is a city. And they have really delivered Chicago to the street. And therefore, they go and they go up and they go to the city. This is a proven historical fact. It's like it's a proven historical fact that when he really first did like 1600, it was also he was still in the past. That is a historical fact. That's not a myth. I'm not telling you something from the internet. These are facts of history. If you can research, you can find them. Yeah, 
Or sometimes he comes in and says, let me make this work. As bad as charity was, God can work. Okay? As bad as this thing was, God was work. I think it's the opposite. I think it's the with the intellectual community. But the mission of the intellectual community is not the same. Human came about the moment of the mission from the history, from the document, from the old history of the We know for a fact that we push out to that same issue to be different from the community. In the early 60s, we know now that he told his advisor that he met Kennedy. He walked away from Kennedy and he walked away from the church and said, What a person. What a winner. I can do it even this time. This guy is you know, But if you remember that, if you think he's vice president, then he thinks that when I was in the South Pacific, he said, What a person. I don't think for one second that the mission of the left is just that it's for the country to be the best. I don't think it's great. 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 It is a thing that the thing that the country is going to be in the history of the world of the world. In other words, scripture is a human word. I do that. I think I would have been a lot of it. I think it's a good word. I think it's a good word. It's a good word. From a strictly human perspective, the most important thing is that it's a good word. Okay, verse three. Uh, oh, wait a minute. We begin to do a question. Yeah, we begin to do a question. Let's start with the question. Since Jesus is our great high priest, we need no other earthly priest anymore. Yet, what comes to us a priest can still be seen in the office of Christ in the New Testament church. So, I'm not going to be a mediator for you. People ask me, Pastor, pray for me. I will pray for that person. I will pray to God, please God, do this or that for that person. But that doesn't mean that person can also do that. And I'm, I'm not the mediator. I'm just another voice. And by the way, my voice that carries no more weight than yours. Okay? So, and, and I make this statement because. Uh, we have a third thing in the church. And so we have a number of people. I don't know how many people are in the church. I don't know how many people are in the church. I don't know how many people are in the church. I know a lot of ex-members. I know a lot of people who are in the church. People sometimes ask, how can you meet a lot of people? I see a lot of people in the church. So when it comes to church, it's a church, it's a church. I'm going to say that 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 I'
the children. And the for the daughter of a to a friend. And not only the parents, but the they can see like this, but it's always sick. And people are like, I think they're going to do this. And the children, they said, well, there's a wrong idea about that kind of thing. The wrong idea that people have is if it's making them a little bit of a it carries more food. It has more impact with the Lord. That's all. That's wrong. That's Roman. To have your name in the mouth in the Roman church means that God the that and means God pays more attention than what other ones. Because you care to You care to have nothing to say to you. Or you care to have your name in the mouth. I love the word. The name of God. The God of the But anyway, um, that's a wrong idea. It's one of those many wrong ideas that has slipped into the Lutheran church for the many centuries. And we have conservative centuries for centuries. And the Lutherans, for whatever reason, I don't know what they are, but I don't know what they are. And they just have to be. Don't let those don't attack those tiny things. Now, the Holy Spirit person, the Bible does say that the prayer of a righteous man comes to his mind. But most of us think that the idea that worm this way into the Christian church, into our Christian culture, is that, well, it's a prayer of a righteous man. But a lot of good, and it's sort of cool up with things a lot better. Is that the way God works? Or is there anything else? Does God write things according to how many people pray for a thing? Of course not. Of course not. That would be like God judging, well, the way I'm going to answer your prayer based on the amount of your faith. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, there are different types of things. Right? Jesus said if you have faith as little mustard, you can take that tree and plant it into this nation. Okay? I would just likely say if you have a chair of one person, you can accept this person to take the chair of the house of God. Right? Isn't that the way God works, folks? It doesn't fall at the power. God uses the small, the inconsequential, the shameful, to accomplish his purpose? Isn't that exactly what Paul said? So where did we get this idea somehow, somewhere, that the, the prayers of 50 people accomplish more than the prayers of one person? Or the prayers of a pastor accomplish more than the prayers of a lay person? Or the prayers of a pastor right next to the bed, the bed, up to the bed, whatever, I practice more than the parents than the parents from my dad. These are all bad ideas. Bad ideas. They're humanistic ideas. They're ideas we need to blast with dynamite and nitroglycerin out of our souls. They're bad for us. And why more pastors do not put their foot down and say, no, I am not going to participate in this management. I am not going to continue with false ideas. Now, you know, once in a while, once in a long while, I might answer somebody here to the front of Most often, that is because I didn't know about anything beforehand. To me, that maybe I should have been more to be a worker over to this kind of busy time in ministry. Mm. Or the second reason is because I myself simply feel um, the need 
to express something on the actual of the foundation uh, for uh, the the person that they're working with. Again, that can be better, that can be more powerful, that can be more accurate and accomplished for that, that can be more accurate. All right. So, as this can be like a high school in the sense of being a poor people from the other. So, serving God, serving others is the way that God gives me Words, drink, for what they want to do. That's kind of high priesthood. That's not needed. Not needed. Right? That's true. Right? Those are, those are, those are high priesthood questions to be asked. Yes. Right. But we fly away from the whole thing. Because again, we don't want to get the false impression. The Roman church, they are Roman church. Now, we can't go directly to that. We've got to go physically to that area, to the church. That's the way to be in the church. But that is to be in the church. The church is to be like this. Because it's hard. It's hard to go into it. And so we go directly to that. Yeah, same, same kind of idea. I mean, um, you know, um, like people thinking their babies to be kissed by the politicians. They want to like just give them some blessing and stuff. But that's crazy, right? But again, this is the way human beings function. Hold that culture and hard physics and hard life and all sorts of other politicians and other things that we talk about. Yeah, I mean, again, this is human nature. And again, we don't want to give into that human nature. Uh, we want to oppose the truth that the truth is just a very physical, not a scriptural idea. So it's not a scriptural idea that one person has more power with God than the other person. The only person, the only human, it has more power with God than any man or human is Jesus because he's also God. But if St. Paul was still alive today, he was still walking around, he would not have any more power with God than you. It's Matthew, or Mark, or Luke, or what the nearest to me, or Joel, or Augustine, or Luther. He would not, none of those people would have any more power with God. They wouldn't have any more. To bring their things there to the new. None. All are equal in God's eyes. So, 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 having, you know, having the table from saying to you means absolutely nothing to say that prayer. You know, I don't know why people do this kind of stuff. I guess it's somehow comforting, I suppose. Uh, somebody, I guess you can say, well, you know, at least somebody high up said, you know, yeah, yeah, that, and, and that's fine, and that's fine, if, if, that, if, that, if that's what you want out of it, but if any of those people, I mean, assuming they're believing, if any of those people are thinking, okay, you know, now I'm going to get my request from me, because this guy is really next to me, you know, so much that I can't tell you what I need to do, but no. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and that, and that, I guess, makes sense from a political standpoint. It makes sense from a human standpoint. From a human standpoint, it makes sense because, because you know, you could probably think to yourself, well, you know, if, if you would have been a child earlier than I did, maybe you should have so, you know, while we can't say that 100% certainty, 
think of that as a family function. God asked him, who told you that you were naked? Have you been on the tree of the family of Jesus? Now, that was a good example because you could get back to about that. You know what I said? I don't know how it's going to get back to that. I don't know how it's going to get back to that. You didn't ask him a question. Is he allowing things to be there? Is he allowing things to be God raised the accommodations for his fallen tradition and used the Lord made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and children. So he made them garments of skin. And no one took the garments of skin, who? The not, the not more, you know? He could, he, he could have snapped his fingers and made a uh, silk wood, right? He did. He had animals killed out and skinned them and put them in their eyes. All so there is in the description of the cold of the bear in the new thing, the reference to the fall of the sun. But here is the reference to the cold of the sun. The clothing which God provides for Adam and Eve protected them from the results of sin with animals, which have been obtained by killing the animals and spitting the blood. This is really the first chapter. The first chapter of Christ is not the two days of Christ in Eve. The first chapter of Christ is really the one before that. When God killed the animals and covered up, which is the condition of the sin, the priestly garment covers the priesthood's glory. So, again, notice the other thing. The priest is not going to be what's done. He's not going to be wearing the costume or the burning thing. He's not going to be wearing the blood. So although clothing was not part of the traditional time of creation, it was distorted in the bad way of seeing communicated with each other. It has been very common in today's church for people coming to the library. So this may show some kind of a purpose. What does this section of the church tell us about seeing the good of all of the church? And I think we should reflect the truth of the story that we have to do. We'll pick it up here. I'll show it to the book of 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 the book Thank <laughs> you. 